Let's all stand together. How many is ready for the word today? I promise I won't keep you long. I have a word that's burning in my spirit today. And this word yesterday morning, I tried my best not to wake my family up as I was preparing and putting the finishing uh, touches, if you will, on this message. Holy Spirit began to download some stuff in me. And I want you to know something. Um, God knows how to take people who've not been in the ministry very long, who've not had a very, uh, a very long relationship with him. And God knows how to remove all the excuses. Are you, are, you, are you ready for all the excuses to be removed today? Uh, uh, now, look, I know there's some people in the room that says, you know, I, I, I've only been saved a, 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 an X amount of time. I've only been this. I've only been that. I'm going to show you something today that I don't care if you've been saved a minute or a hundred hours or a hundred years. I'm going to tell you that we are all, if we are of Jesus, we are all a part of the J crew. We are all a part of of the Jesus crew. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn them over to Luke chapter 10. Very familiar passage of scripture. And uh, we are going to read all 24 verses. We've taken the liberty of putting that on the bulletin for, or uh, on the media for you. Your Bible says this, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto you, Croazine. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been, in, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears uh, you hears me he who rejects you rejects me and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me verse 17 then the 70 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Verse 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Somebody say, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. 
And here's what he said, Father, I thank you. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Somebody say babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have, be, have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And, that, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Verse 23. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which have seen the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Father, thank you for your word. I know, Father, that this word is anointed. I ask you, Lord, that you would open my eyes and my ears for me to see and hear your counsel for the remainder of our time together. Holy Spirit, I'm leaning 100% upon you for this revelation. Help me to say the things I should say and not to say the things that I shouldn't. In Jesus' matchless, mighty name we pray. And everyone shouted, amen, and amen, and amen. You may be seated this morning. We read a lot of scripture this morning. But I'm going to break it down from two verses that's going to help us. And in order to understand the significance of this passage of Scripture, you're going to have to understand a couple of things that Jesus was saying that the, that the disciples who were Jews understood when he said it. Back in verse 3, Jesus said, Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. This is what Jesus was saying. I'm sending you out as lambs. The word lambs in the Greek is this. It means young, immature, inexperienced, no verifiable track record of success and vulnerable. Amen. What's interesting here is that uh, uh, there could be some theological discussions about whether they're 70 or 72. Here's what Jesus did. Back in Genesis chapter 10, at the time, there were 70 nations on the planet in the Hebrew. If you called those nations by their name in the Greek, there was two extra names, which would have made it 72. So it doesn't matter if they're 70 or 72. Jesus had it covered. And he was sending people out into the nation. Can you say Amen. And he was sending people out into the nations. Think about it. Jesus launched his international ministry with 70 people. And, and these 70 people, he called them lambs. You know what he could have called them? He could have called them young. He could have called them immature. He didn't call them sheep. He called them lambs. He could have said, you don't have any experience. You do, you do not have any verifiable track record of success. And you're going to be vulnerable. Anybody fit the description of lamb in the room? I think we all could raise our hand there. I think we all get a little nervous in the service when the pastor asks us to do something in ministry or, or Holy Spirit uh, lay something on your heart to do. And the first thing we talk about was, well, I don't know this and I don't know that and I don't have experience with this and I don't have, I don't have the money to do. And I, I don't have, we start talking, our, we do the Moses thing. Lord, you don't want me. I a stutter and, 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 and I killed a man and buried him on the backside of the desert. God, I don't qualify for what you're trying to get me to do. But God, Jesus looks at these boys and he says, uh, you are young, you are inexperienced, you have no verifiable track record and you're vulnerable and you'll do. Yeah. Jesus is so cool because you don't have to qualify first. He always calls, uh, he always qualifies the called. Amen. Say this with me. Say, ye is me. Ye. So when, G, when, when, when Mark said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, if ye is me, well, what are you talking about? You mean I got to do something? Yeah. Well, I don't know how. I don't have experience. I don't, really? So you'd be lamb? And then Jesus said, not only am I going to call you lamb, but I'm going to send you out among the wolves. You have to understand what he's talking about with the wolves. And, and, and a wolf is this. It is uh, someone who has the spirit that is cruel, greedy, materialistic, predatory, money-grabbing, and destructive. 
Jesus said, I'm going to send all of the experience, all the inexperienced folks into a world who thinks they got it all going on. Isaiah and, and Jeremiah, the prophets, when they talked about wolves, they talked about people who were steeped in the law but didn't have a lifestyle that was complementary to the rules. And it was viciousness. And, they, and, and, and so what Jesus is talking about here, he's saying, I, I'm going to send you out to some people who are cruel, some meanie poos. They're greedy. Mm -hmm. They're materialistic. Some of y'all right now are thinking about people in your world. Uh huh. They're predatory. They're always looking for somebody to take advantage of. Uh huh. That's why Jesus said, when you go out, don't take anything with you. Don't take any money. Don't take any food. Don't take. Why? I want you to be 100% dependent on me. Because I'm sending you out to some people that's going to try to take advantage of you. Because they know that you're lambs. <clears throat> Let me tell you how my church is going to grow. It's not going to grow because we've got uh, seasoned sheep. And we do. My leadership team says, he said sheep. But we have a lot of lambs. That the seasoned sheep, let's call them shepherds. We'll love on the lambs. Help them grow. Because if you're sitting in this room today, everybody do this. You have a ministry assignment. You're not dead yet. You just proved it. Not me. Yes, you. Lamb. Yes. Young lambs. That's the new name of the fuel group. The, lamb, the, the young lambs. I can't even say it. They're over there going, young lambs, go. <laughs> but he said, I'm sending you out, and you're going to run into some people who are just flat out cruel. They're, they're very mean. They're greedy. They're materialistic. They're predatory. They're money grabbing. That's all they talk about is money, 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 money. And not to mention, they are destructive. They'll try to destroy you. How would y'all like to go to that job interview? Here's the job. Looking for people who don't know what they're doing? And we're going to send them out, and you may not make them back alive. Right? Isn't that what it feels like? Oddly enough, he's sending them into the world, and he got these men out of the church into the streets. And he was showing these men. I want to show you something. Watch this. I love this. I love this. I love this. So the disciples come back, and they are thrilled. They're coming back. they got a spring in their step. They're like, hey, Jesus, even the demons are subject to us in your name. <laughs> yeah. We're healing the sick. We're casting out demons. Man, life is great. Jesus, yeah. yeah inexperienced lambs out there healing the sick. Seeing the demon-possessed delivered. All these inexperienced people. Now, imagine. You're going out and you really don't have a clue what you're doing. You're just, you've heard Jesus give you an instruction. He tells you where to go. He tells you where to stay. He tells you what to say when you get there. It's all about what Jesus has said. And he gives you the instruction. There is no guesswork in the ministry. Uh, he tells you what to say. It, 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 it's all right here. And, and, and he said, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to have you go out. And you're going to heal the sick and cast out demons. And you all are going to be rock stars. But people are going to hate you because you're doing it in my name. And so when they all come back into church on Sunday morning, I don't know if it's on Sunday morning or not. But they all get together and they're congregating together. And they're throwing a celebration. And they're like, Jesus, this is cool. Even demons are subject to us in your name. That is awesome. And Jesus said, yeah. I saw Satan fall like lightning. And then he says something interesting. Jump back down to verse 19. I want to show you something. He says, behold, I have given you authority hmm. someone say me and he uses the word in the king james version it says to tread in the greek tread means to crush and to advance with each step y'all are starting to get this these bunch of inexperienced lambs have been given the authority to crush and to advance uh why? Because Jesus said, do not get so excited about this authority because it's happening in my name. I saw Satan fall. 
from heaven. Which means if Satan fell from heaven, he got ejected from eternity. And now he's cast into this dimension called time. Anything in this dimension is under his feet. Come on, I'm saying something right now. So whatever the enemy has set up against you, no matter how high it seems to be in your world, it is still under his feet. And if we are in Christ, then that means it's under our feet. Which means that's why we can crush the enemy. We can advance with every step. Because we've been given the authority to do what Jesus did. And he said this, and he said, I'm going to give you the authority to crush and advance on the serpents. This word serpent here, it's an emblem of a cunning, uh, of cunningness and wisdom. It's what the Old Testament scholars and the Jewish people of the day would still be considered a, a, a word picture of the devil. So he said, I'm going to give you the authority to crush the devil and to advance on the devil. But then he says another word. He says, not only will you be able to step on the devil, but you'll also be able to deal with the scorpions. Now, this word scorpion in the Greek is this. It's a little animal lurking with a poisonous sting in its tail. Not only are you going to be able to deal with the devil himself, but you're going to be able to deal and identify the little things that carry the poisonous strike. And it's lurking. I'm saying something right now. Because Jesus said, now look, I'm going to send you out as lambs among the wolves. They're going to be cruel. They're going to do some things to try to destroy you. But I'm giving you the authority so that that destructive thing that's in them has to bow because of the resurrection power that is in you. I'm giving you the authority, the, the, the basileia, the king's domain, the king's dominion. That king's authority begins to manifest because I have sent you, not about a man laying hands on you and sending you out. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And you're not going to do it because you have a wealth of experience because you have a ton of, of real life that you can share you're going to do it because you have an authority that's been given to you by our father through Jesus and what he did on the cross that blood of Jesus makes us operate in a supernatural power of healing deliverance the miracles the signs the wonders they follow us wherever we go and the devil can't stand it but Jesus said don't you worry about the devil because I'm going to give you the authority to crush him and to advance on him and every little strength strategy that he has set up against you that has that poisonous strike in it you're going to be able to identify it step on it and move on and then he said watch 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 you'll have this authority over all the power of your enemy and nothing nothing shall by any means hurt you well nothing except for what the doctor said what Nothing except for what my bank accounts. What? Nothing except for the circumstance I'm dealing with. No, 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 no. Nothing. Why? Because you identify you are operating in the strength of someone else. You are operating in the name. The power is in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because the demons... There's a story in the book of Acts. There's a high priest named Sceva. Sceva had seven sons. Paul was there, and he's casting out demons, and he's healing the sick. And Sceva was a high priest. He's the religious type with church. And his boys said, huh, we might can make a little money on that. So they start casting out demons in the name of Jesus that Paul serves. They were trying to ride someone else's anointing. And the demon said, this Jesus we know. And this Paul we know. They could have said, this Tony we know. And I hope they say, in this, your name. But then they looked at the seven sons of Sceva, this demon one. And said, who are you? Hmm. Does the devil know your name? I got a feeling he's going to know some people's name who know how to crush him. I got a feeling he's going to know some people's name who know how to advance on the kingdom of... Mm. 
Ain't ashamed to identify the scorpions, the little things that lurk with poison in their tail. And, and it's interesting that scorpions normally lurk inside of rock covers or walls where it's warm. Because if it gets too hot, the scorpions have to move away. <laughs> So the scorpions like hanging out where it's lukewarm. <laughs> I just said a thing, didn't I? And I'm just teaching you the Bible. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you the authority to crush the devil and everything connected to him, no matter how big or small it is. And nothing, nothing. Watch this. You have power over all the power of the enemy. What's all mean? That's what it means in the Greek. You want to talk Greek? Here we go. Everybody say all. You're speaking Greek? Yeah. So let me show you something. Not every one of these 70 stuck to it. I don't have time to go down the list, but I can show you where many who became the bishops of the church at this town or that town set up churches, set up assemblies in the name of Jesus, got distracted and became bishops of other idols and other gods. What happened? They had forgotten their assignment and who it was that authored it. Man, I'm saying a thing right now. Mm -hmm. You see, the disciples that went out were lambs. It's always amazing to me that when lambs start growing up and maturing and become sheep, how sheep do stupid stuff. When I was in the car business, we always, uh, we always liked new car salesmen, men or women, to come in. They didn't have any sales experience. We always would say, a new broom sweeps clean because I could train them the way I wanted them. We could load their lips. They didn't know what they were saying. But always, after about six months to a year, these newbies got smart and went from selling 12, 15 cars a month to selling two or three. Because they got smart, start learning how to do it. They stopped relying on their management to help them along. <laughs> Boo-boo, are you taking, you taking notes? Because this is really good. I think I'm going to. I'm going to buy this DVD myself. Because the authority is not in Tony Allen Bates. The authority is not in your name. The authority is in the name of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, don't get so excited that the enemy and that the de demons are subject. Because that's not you. That's me. You ought to be excited because my father knows your name. In a fallen world where man had been divided from God, Jesus said, it is more exciting for you that my Father has written your name in heaven. And I want you to know something. I may not make it on a chart somewhere, and you may never make it in the bright lights anywhere, but your daddy knows who you are, and that ought to be shouting ground. That's enough right there because he knows who I am. He has given me the authority, and not only does my daddy know who I am, but the devil knows who I am, and I'm glad that he's mad because that makes me glad. Let me, let, me, let me show you something. If you are at a point in your life where it seems like the struggles and the, and the resistance and the load is nearly unbearable, hear Pastor Tony say this to you. The amount of pressure and resistance is directly connected to the overflow and the breakthrough you are about to experience right now. Do you think literally that the demons want you walking in the fullness of your purpose? That's why when you try to become an outrageous giver, you get a flat tire. Or your engine blows up. Or you got to replace a window in the house. Something happens, right? That's why when you start speaking healing over your body, you get a head cold and a sinus congestion nearly almost knocks you out. Oh, I'm saying something right now. Because the enemy wants you looking at facts and not walking in truth. 
The enemy wants you looking at your knapsack and your money bag and your sandals and what you have. Jesus said, I don't want you to take any of that stuff with you because if you got it with you, they're going to try to steal it from you anyway. I want you 100% dependent upon me and I'm going to get to send you there. And when you get there, they'll, you either put your peace with them or you'll take your peace back. Because I'm going to tell you, even when you go into places where they've seen me do my miracles, not everyone's going to accept you because they've hated you because of me. They hated me because of him. And Jesus said, when you get to that place, it'd be all right. Go on in. They're going to reject you. Not everyone you come in contact with is going to be your buddy and your friend and going to receive this message. You know what you do? You don't get mad. You don't even get even. You just back up and say, got to go. Going to dust off. Move on. And when you leave, Jesus said, and tell them that the kingdom of God's come near you. Got to go. See, here's the thing. Say this with me. Folks don't have to deal with me. They get to. Let's say that again until you believe it. Folks don't have to deal with me. They get to. Amen. Because I'm a child of the Most High God. We run the place. It is shot ground. Because if you truly ran the place, you'd be turning the lights off on the enemy strategy set up against you. You'd be opening your mouth and rejecting those reports, reversing those curses, releasing uh, the, the healing, the manifestation of a thing, canceling the assignment of the enemy. Because if it don't line up with this, you don't need or want it anyway. <laughs> this is great. And let me tell you, these disciples that went out there, these 70 they were weird. Let me show you where ministry did not happen. In most of the temples. These disciples, they were told, when you go somewhere that will receive you and accept you, stay there. I'll let you all... Mm -hmm. So many things I could say. I'm moving on. Oh, Lord, I don't want to really say that. <laughs> Church shopping shouldn't be on your Christmas list. And Jesus said, <laughs> can we just get back to the red letter word, please? Uh, Behold, I give you the authority. And he said, nothing will hurt you. If nothing, that means no one. But no one gets closer than something. People always get a little closer to hurting us than stuff. That's why when Jesus said, you're going to run into some people that's going to treat you bad and mistreat you and, and because you... Let me just say this. If you are going to be ministry minded, I love our group of folks. I really do. Hear me when I say this. Your ministry is based, the effectiveness of your ministry is not based upon the acceptance of others. It's based upon the uh, uh, willful obedience to the assignment. Okay? So you don't need man's approval to do a God thing. Amen. I'm saying something right now. So, so, so most people who don't go to church when they come to church they confuse people in church with people who are in Christ and it's not the same do you know the devil comes to church he wants to interrupt the celebration because this is a celebration station we're a hospital we're a delivering room we're a celebration station we get the party on we like to sing dance give We like to do all those things, but the enemy wants to disrupt it. Why? Because he knows that if he can just get one or two who forgot about the authority and the author of the authority that we've been given, 
But it was Jesus that gave us this authority. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, I got to go away, but don't you sweat this because I, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to send you back a comforter. He's going to be the helper. And, 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 and everything in your life that's connected to your ministry assignment cannot be done unless Holy Spirit is empowering. That's right. Think of it like this. Your car is powered by your battery. So my car, Buick, powered by EverReady. Now I look at it spiritually. My ministry, powered by Holy Spirit. Amen. My music, my message, my songwriting, everything I do, powered by Holy Spirit. Maybe it's your, your, your baking. Maybe it's your sewing. Maybe it's your, what, what, what is your real life thing that you like to do? What, what is it outside the walls here that, that, that commands a lot of your time? What, what is it that you're passionate about? Have you ever thought because you're passionate about it that the people that are, that are connected to that same passion is your mission field? Yeah. And when you get there, that passion is powered by Holy Spirit. Because yes, Jesus sent these 70 out two by two. Two's the number of confirmation in the Jewish world. Amen. So if you're going to say a thing, you have to have confirmation. And two, require it. It's the same with accusation. It's the same with assignments. Whatever it is, you have to have two. So have you ever thought about that what you're doing outside the walls of the church, instead of complaining about that dark place you get to go to every day, what, 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 what if that's your mission field? You're not going to want to miss next Sunday's message because I'm talking about some shepherds in the field next week. Got to get here. But everything that we do ministerially, forget ministerially. Everything we do in the life of a child of God should be ministerial. Amen. It shouldn't be two lifestyles. It should be just flowing out of you. I think about Miss Yvonne. She's bubbles and sunshine. It just flows out of her. If you don't want to feel good, don't get around her. If you want to leave here miserable, stay away from Yvonne. Because she's going to hug the life back into you. Bubbles and sunshine. That's why her ministry thrives because that's just who she is. And when she gets around people who are in dark places, the bubbles and sunshine show up and they are attracted to her. So she gives them the love of God that she's been empowered and by the authority of God to release. And that, res and that revelation that is released gets penetrated into the hearts of those people who are in the dark places. And guess what? When they get out, they come here and then they go out and go get more people just like them. See how that works? You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Matter of fact, Jesus said, lambs. Lambs. You know what the church suffers from? Oh, this is going to be good. Silence of the lambs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're awesome. Some of y'all will get that one on the way home. Kids, if, if you have to Google that, you're not old enough to know what I'm talking about. So my question is this. Are you ready to be a part of the Jesus crew? Amen. How many is ready to go to school, go to work, where you play, and be a part of that crew that goes out operating in the authority? Crushing and advancing with every step. This is good, isn't it? It's powerful. Powerful. So I'm ready. I'm a part of it. I'm a part of it. Amen. So we come in here, and I want you to bring all your friends here, and that's great, and we're going to love on them, and this is a place to be loved and a place to belong. We are indeed the perfect church for imperfect people, but let me tell you where your ministry starts. When we say the final amen, and you walk out the door, and you get in your car, guess where you are? You're in ministry. Your family needs you to be in ministry. Here's a fact. You need you to be in ministry. You know, sometimes we just have to minister to ourselves. David said something, and in, 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 uh, uh, he said, I've had to encourage myself in the Lord. Amen. Sometimes you just got to minister to you. That's all right. I walk around when sinus congestion shows up in my body. I walk around ministering to myself, laying hands on me because Father, Son, Holy Spirit's in me where two or three agree. So I'm already in alignment and in agreement. I don't go 
sinus congestion, leave, and then figure out how much stuff I got in the bathroom. Oh, I just said something. I, I was preaching really good till I got to meddling. Are you ready to be a part of the Jesus crew? Not just the church folks. Not just a part of my church. I'm talking about an active member in our community reaching people wherever you go. Well, Pastor, I don't go anywhere. Where do you go? I go to Walmart from time to time. Well, okay, guess what? Walmart to Mission Field. Go at midnight. They need some help in there. And it'd be all right to have a little joy in your step. I remember one time, I'm sharing this and I'm done. I was checking out at Walmart. Going through the line. Little lady helping me had this penti, pentagram. I did, but is that what it's called, pentagram? Tattooed on her skin right here between her thumb and her finger. And as I stepped up, she started going. <laughs> she started growling at me. I started laughing. The guy that was with me said, what's wrong with her? I leaned in real close to that little girl and I said, I see you. She was demon possessed. That freaked me out. You know why? Because you don't know who you are. She started growling. And I leaned in and said, I see you. And the little girl just kind of snapped out of him and says, Is that all, sir? I wanted to pray for her right then. She wouldn't even look at me. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Do you know that? And every step I take, I can show you in Scripture that every step I just showed you tread. You crush and advance. Isn't that good? Amen. Now here's what happens. As soon as you make up your mind that you're not going to be afraid of anything demonic, guess what happens? Everything demonic starts showing up. Amen. You don't lose sleep over that stuff. Amen. Amen. Is this good? Let me ask you this way. Anybody... Anybody in the room part of the J crew? Amen. How, how many people are going to go out and just love on? Do you, let me give you some rough numbers. I'm a numbers guy. I got to count in halves with his hand. Count twice. One, two, three, four, five. I got 10 fingers. Do you know that if every person in this room today, today, if you just impacted one life this week and said, hey, would you come to church with me next week? Do you know that next week we may not have enough chairs? Just one. I wouldn't even know how to get the conversation started. Ready? Write this down. Where do you go, church? Hey, where do you go, church? You can ask that question when you're picking your food up over to McDonald's. Hey, Merry Christmas. Where do you go to church? That's so non-confrontational. Oh, I go over at the First Church of the Frozen Chosen. Do you like it? <laughs> Pastor Popsicle. great conversation started. Say that with me. Where do you go, church? It is so easy. You wear your Redskins uniform to see who you... HTTR is not allowed in this room. I don't know who you are. Ushers, could you please have her removed? I'm just kidding. <laughs> and people know who you're pulling for because they see it on your chest. You're not afraid to say, you like the Redskins? You could have said, who are you pulling for? Where do you go to church? If they tell you they love it, man, that's awesome. That's 
That's right. That's awesome. I don't go to church anywhere. Oh, gosh, you've got to come check us out. Here, you don't say because our pastor's great and our music's great and all that. That's, that's, that's circumstantial. You say, because every time, ever since I've been going there, God has changed my life in so many ways. I don't really have time to explain it all. There you go. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Walk away. They're like, hey, 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 hey where do you go to church? I go over to my church. Yeah, but what's the name of it? Right? How many of y'all ever got that? No, what's the name of your church? It's called my church. I love it. I love it. I'll show up and do conferences and concerts and stuff, and the pastor will say, Senior Pastor Tony Allen Bates, he's the pastor of my church. Well, not my church, but the church he attends. It's called my church. It's strategic, guys, because it don't really matter what the name is over the door. Just come on over to my church. There you go. Because we're a place to be loved, a place to belong. Absolutely, we're the perfect church for imperfect people. You don't have to qualify. You just come on in. Can you say amen? That's right. Father, we thank you for this day. And I would be remiss if, if we didn't give somebody an opportunity to become a part of the Jesus crew today. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, are, are you in this room today, sir, ma'am? You don't know who Jesus is? Can I, can I ask you just to do me a favor? Would you just raise your hand and say, Pastor, I, I don't know who Jesus is. I know about him. I, I really don't know him. I've never been forgiven of my sin. Is there one in this room that says, but I'd like to. I'd like to be a part of that team today. I want to ask Jesus to come into my life. Would you just wave your hand and let me see? Is that you today? Is there one? Quickly. Quickly. All right. Then I'm just going to assume that we're all in this room. Now, some of us on the J crew, we've been riding the pine long enough. It's time to get in the game. So if you're going to be a part of the J crew, is there one in this room that says, yes, pastor, I'm, I'm saved, but from this moment on, I'm going to operate in the authority that God has given me. And I'm going to walk out of here and try to impact my world for the cause of Christ. Is that you today? Would you just slip your head up? Amen. Say, I'm not riding the bench anymore. In Jesus' name, all over this room. So, Father, today as we leave this place, we ask you, Father, that you would help us to be mindful of our assignment, help us to be mindful of the authority you've given us, but also to help us to be mindful of the author of this authority and assignment. Help us to trust you more than we trust ourselves. Help us to trust you more than we trust anybody else. Help us to get in your word. And Holy Spirit, gives, give us these revelatory truths that impact and cause us to be an impact in your kingdom. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we are a part of the original J. Crew. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shouted, amen. And amen. And amen.